Hello and welcome to 2019. This is not the second part of the previous video that I was making. Uh, I have an extra day off this week because it's New Year's and I'm just doing something a little different. Um, I am planning my 2019 genealogy projects and I'm not talking about developing Borland genetics. I'm talking about my own personal genealogy and what I want to accomplish this year uh, in my own family research. Um, and I am sharing with this with the public and uh, in doing so, I hope to keep myself accountable for my uh, in reaching my goals this year with my research and my work and my own genealogy. So uh, I am also going to talk about DNA reconstruction a little bit, and I'm gonna and I'm going to set up a, a an extract segments project uh, in this video. Uh, so there is something in it for the public other than just seeing my family tree, um, and. I have also put a link to the Trello board for that project uh, in my Facebook users group. Uh, so even though I'm just starting the project today and it's one of the nine or so projects I plan to do in the new year, uh, so it's not going to be done today. It's there, I'll probably have a series of videos uh, as I accomplish my goal. Uh, the road to uh, reconstructing Eloise Lindauer's ancestors uh, uh, video series, I guess. Um, and I'll probably have video series or single videos for some of my other goals too. So let me show you what I'm using. I'm using a program called Trello that I was just uh, turned on to by a couple of my Facebook friends that recommended it for me. And I am very happy they did uh, because I am thinking my life is going to be like super organized in 2019 because I've already been making so much use of it. I've already created like 20 Trello boards for different aspects of my life everything from music to genealogy to, uh, uh, to customer service on my, uh, on my Borland genetics, and I'm tracking uh, user, user tickets and things like that and develop uh, future uh, developments, uh, features I wanna develop for the program. Um, I'm tracking my musical projects and some personal goals and things like that too. So I, I really like this software and thanks to those of you who recommend it to me, I am making good use of it. So, so I've, what I've done is I created nine goals for 2019, and for about five of those goals, I've already created, uh, you know, some. Uh, each of these is like a to-do list. It shows some of the things I want to do to carry out those goals. You know, set the goal, set up a project board, organize the project. You know, they're, these are very high level. Uh, I haven't gotten into specifics on this too, too much on a lot of these, but one of them I really started working on. So pretty much this is all form right now, and uh, it's going to be useful to get me focused, but I haven't done a lot yet, except on this one, except on Extract Segments Project, Eloise Lindauer. So what I have here is a link to another Trello board, and we'll get to that in a minute because I want to get actually into the project, but I want to show you what I'm hoping to accomplish uh, with these, uh, these boards or, or with the whole Trello system. So... I have an ideas column here, and this is my, my top level 2019 genealogy board, not for any individual project. It's the project of organizing my genealogical research itself, I guess you could call it, this board. So I want to organize separate boards for each goal. On each board, I want to include lists of brainstorming ideas and list potential resources, established facts, hypotheses, and other uh, relevant information specific to each project. Create hyperlinks between related boards. And uh, I want to incorporate meaningful visual representations or visual presentations and videos. Uh, it should be a primary goal for each project in addition to the research or DNA element to whatever that I'm actually trying to find out about my family. I want to present it in a way that may be interesting to others. And I want to tie together eventually all these genealogy boards into maybe some sort of tree structure that actually resembles my family tree so it could be floated around you know, or navigated uh, easily by me or by others who may be related to me in a certain way, uh, you know, a certain branch of my family. And I've, I also put some uh, aspirational things on here or projects for maybe next, to, you know, 2020 already. Uh, or if I finish early a uh, project before my deadline, these are some other things I can work on. Uh, I want to find out how the Borlands from Belize are related to me. I have no idea, but I've recently made contact with quite a few of them on Facebook. They've added me as friends and there is a, a large Borland family in Belize. Uh, and that's great. I, I, I'm dying to know how, how we're related. Um, I want to transcribe and actually cook the recipes from my great-great-grandmother Lizzie Miller's cookbook, which I inherited, and that's going to be fun. 
because uh, I like food and I like cooking. Uh, I want to get into artifact testing this year uh, once the hopefully the price comes down a little bit on that. Um, and I want to learn how to use uh, Genome Mate Pro. Uh, that looks like potentially a really nice piece of software. And I just downloaded it recently before the holidays. And uh, I played with it a little bit. And it looks like it's got a lot of cool features that I'd like to learn how to use. And uh, the Capper Family Lazarus Project. That's an interesting project I hope to do for one branch of my family this year. All right, let's get on to Eloise. So here's her board. And her board, if you want to look, at, or her, or this is her card, and a card has a link to her own board, I guess is the Trello terminology. Um, so it's got a due date. I set the due, due date, I guess, tomorrow at noon. I don't remember setting that date, but that's OK if that's the date I set for it. Um, then I have attachments. I've attached two attachments. One is the board that represents her project, and the other is this picture. So it has a nice picture on, my, uh, on the parent board. So it's easy to find, and I don't have to look through a bunch of text. I just look for a picture of my great-great-grandmother, and I say, oh, that's the board I want to work on. OK, and then I've got progress on some things. Uh, see, hers is a little more detailed. And I've got to transfer some of this over to her board, because first I put these lists, uh, this list on the parent board, and i got to move some of it. To, and that's really easy to do uh, onto her own board. So you know, my first idea is I wanted to set a goal, set up a project board document the validity of the of her reconstruction that I did in the past uh, before I had my script manager and before you know the script manager in my program really opens things up to uh, like peer review if you want to call it people people can check my work and make sure I did it right uh, so I want to make that more transparent for my family how I created Eloise in case they find anything wrong uh, they can fix it or tell me to fix it or whatever uh, I want to uh, di define criteria and assumptions for visual phasing, and we'll get into that in a minute as we talk about the actual project. Um, I want to present my pro my I think that's I should say progress present my progress on the uh, this reconstruction attempt in a clear and reproducible steps. So I basically want to show people through videos like this how I'm doing it, so they could do that with their family, and so they could also check the work I've done on my own family. Um, uh, perform, the, actually perform the actual reconstruction, or I should say reconstruction, because this is actually a multiple output project. Uh, and I want to test the validity of the reconstruction by examining matches generated by each extracted output kit and making sure things work the way I expected it to. And I want to plan further derivative research problems that, that the output kits may facil facilitate. Um, and here I have examples exploring my Alsatian and my colonial New York ancestry. And I want to make these some of the output kits part of larger projects uh, with more donors and maybe more com complicated projects than the one I have here. Uh, but OK, so you, what I'm doing here is I basically I've correct. Uh, I have created a 29 percent. We'll go to her board uh, reconstruction for my great great grandmother using Borland genetics. So. I've got her kit information here, and I've got a lot of other information I'm going to get to on this on this card here. Uh, but I achieved 29% uh, coverage. It's a mono kit, and I want to split that kit essentially into a bunch of smaller mono kits uh, that represent her ancestors. Essentially, this is a chromosome mapping project, if you will. Except I'm going to take it a step further, and once we've made the map, I'm going to use it as a sort of recipe to to chop up this raw DNA file sort of into its component ancestors. Um, so let's start out just taking a look at the organization of this board itself, because I think this is not only a way to organize the project, but also a way to present it. And I have attached a link to this in my Facebook users group because it's kind of, uh, it's the first, I guess it'll be sort of the gateway to this project on how to use the, uh, or instructions on how to use the extract segments tool in my kit. Um, but OK, so here's how I've organized it. I've got a general project management progress uh, card here. And it is, I've got only one link right now. And that is, I, I put in a, you know, a description here. And it's just a placeholder, really. I just wanted to. Uh, Trello attachment, that would take you back to you know, the parent board, um, just for navigation purposes. Let's go back to her and go back to this card. OK, then we scroll down a little bit. And I organize this card into things to do, tasks in progress, and goals accomplished. And I haven't really accomplished much, but I wanted to put a couple things in each uh, 
in each category just to show you how it, what, what I'm doing. Um, you'll see in tasks in progress, make introductory video. I am literally in the progress of that as we speak. Um, okay. And so one of the things I have to do is carry over my project specifics from the parent board. I haven't done that yet, but we talked about that. Um, so now I'm going to get the DNA resources in a minute, but let's take a look at the paper research list. Uh, and here I have the relevant links that are going to be really easy for me to go back and forth between different places where I have information about Eloise and her family, uh, which will be useful me, for me for the pro process. Uh, so, for example, I click on Ancestry.com and I've set up a link so that when I click on it, oops, I click on something other than the rename, it takes me to Eloise Lindauer's pedigree. And it's really, really easy to set up. Um, and it's nice to have information like this in one place. So then let's say I want to see something on Familypedia. My cousin Richard put an article up, up or about there. Um, you know, it just takes me to the link. And if I want to read something about her life or something that may be useful for me and, you know, about her children or about branches of the family and trying to identify the matches to this kit, uh, I have that right there at my fingertips. So I've got a link to the tree. I've got a link to Familypedia. I've got a link to Find a Grave uh, and her Wikidata. Um, I don't know if a lot of people are using Wikidata for genealogy, but my cousin Richard uh, started doing that, and I think it's a fantastic idea. Um, and then we got a historical timeline, and this is not unlike the one on Ancestry, really. It just shows all the events in her life. I put them in order. Um, and let's say they're out of order. If I found one out of order, you just drag. It's so nice, this uh, Trello thing. I really like it. Um, so it shows all the places where she lived, and uh, let's say... Yeah, they're in uh, 1872. I got her opening a bank account. <laughs> um, and I think my cousin Richard found that. Uh, information about which church she attended, things like that, and death. And, and a lot of this is just for presentation purpose because um, it's nice to put a human element, even if we're just doing a DNA project. Uh, it's not just a DNA project. It is, the whole purpose of this is for family history, at least it, that's my purpose. Um, so then I have a list of people, and there she is. That's my great-grandmother, the great-great-grandmother Eloise. And there's her husband. It looks a little bit like me. Um, and then I had put up uh, uh, a, a card for each of the of her children. That's not the clearest of pictures. Um, but some of them have nice pictures, like that one is my great-grandfather, uh, Arthur. That's my line. But I put up pictures for each of his children. If I want to add notes or put attachments or links on any of these cards, I can, and as I will as I need to. For example, if I find that someone in one of these lines has taken a DNA test, I may want to put it in here and organize it that way and sort of come up with a uh, perhaps a strategy for reconstructing some of these uh, some of these siblings or some of these children of Eloise. But that's, uh, that's that, and then there's places, and that's really kind of just for fun here. I found that uh, where she lived on Bleecker Street in Manhattan is there. It's for rent right now. You could open up your very own business downstairs from where she lived if you like. Um, and uh, this uh, this one is kind of cool. I see my cousin Richard found this. This is a, a picture taken at the church at their Trinity Lutheran Church where they attended, and it's actually got in the front right row there my great grandmother uh, May. I recognize her in the white dress in the front on the right. So that's kind of cool. Okay. So I think you're getting an idea for what Trillo is and how it works. Uh, so let's jump into the project itself and how I'm using it for specifically for DNA and DNA reconstruction here. Um, we'll go to the DNA resources list. So one thing I've done, and let me close it for, <laughs> for full effect. Um, I'm going to click on DNA painter profile, and I've linked to a new profile that I've created for Eloise Lindauer, and it's ready to go. It's a clean slate for the year 2019. Every, it's a brand new project. I haven't done anything on it except for just set it up so far, really. Um, okay. I'm going to keep that open because we're going to use that in a minute. I'm actually going to begin working on the project. Uh, okay. And then we have GEDmatch resources, and I think some of you are going to find this neat because what I've done is I put, you know, an attachment. And so if I want to get the GEDmatch quickly, I don't have to type it in. Just click on this. It'll let me log in. Um, then I've got kit information, and I put her information about her kit, her Z kit, her Borland genetics kit, and then all of the kits of her descendants and whether or not they're reconstructed or real people, I listed here. Um, 
So that's a lot. That was like 15 maybe. Um, so that's why we got such a nice 29% uh, reconstruction of her, even though it's the, we're talking like Civil War era. Um, and resolved cousin kits. I just got started. I've resolved several more of her cousins, but I didn't add them to the list yet. This is just my cousin Eloise Hopkins, who shares the name Eloise, which is kind of neat, um, who has tested with Ancestry and uploaded to GEDmatch so that we can uh, compare data. So I've got a lot more to add there, and we'll do that when we actually do the, uh, the visual phasing or chromosome mapping, whichever you would like to call it. Uh, we're going to add a lot of names to that list, I hope. And then now in Ancestry, I've done sort of a very similar thing. Uh, I listed tested descendants, and I did it by account. So in my account, I've tested myself, my brother, and my Uncle Michael, uh, and my cousin Richard that I've talked about a couple times here. He's tested one, two, three, four, five, six people in this, you know, six descendants of this person. Uh, then you got names here. Oops, ah, lost that. That's under ancestry resources. I got names of some other people who have done tests, like uh, let's say my cousin Loretta Frudenberg. So what happens is, you know, I click on it. And it takes me to her ancestry profile and I could take a look at, you know, I see I match her, she's on my list, and I could take a look at all my other DNA kits and see if she matches them as well. Um, Ancestry does not have a chromosome browser, so uh, I'm gonna have to try to convince people to upload to GEDmatch unless they do create a chromosome browser. So I don't think she's done that yet, but uh, hopefully she will. <laughs> and uh, then I have resolved cousin matches. These are not descendants of, um, and by the way, the descendants aren't going to be useful for this project because I've already reconstructed Eloise. Uh, I may want to make a more complete restructuring of her, a reconstruction of her in the future, and it would be nice if uh, more of her descendants would upload their data to GEDmatch or to donate it to me. Um, but for this project itself, that's not necessary because what I'm doing is mapping what I've already reconstructed by ancestor. And this is useful for me for this project, the resolved cousin matches. So for each of them, I'm putting like two links. So for the first one, well, I have Susan and Winfield Reuter here that I, I, I have spoken with a couple times via messaging, uh, and they've tested with Ancestry, and you click on the link. The first link is going to do just what the last one did. It's going to take you to uh, the Ancestry profile for the user. And again, I could select different ones of my tests, and I could switch between, you know, it'll show me for each of the tests that is administered by Susan here, uh, which ones I match. And here I match like two of her kits and some of my other relatives match more than that. Um, but I put a second link in each one of these two, and that goes to my mirror tree. And I, when I say mirror tree, I, I put these all as, as little subtrees within my, I only have one ancestry tree um, that I created anyway. I do have access to some other people's that have allowed me to share, but uh, for my own research, I, I put them all in a single tree. But I basically put it into a uh, mirror tree, and you can see here I have Susan linking up to uh, the Weber family. And if you remember on Eloise's tree, one of her ancestors' names was Weber. We are cousins through that branch. But anyway, you see how that works. And you see, I guess, why it would be useful to organize your matches like this and put links to them. Uh, because while you're working on a project, it's easy to jump back and forth. You can build your tree as you go. You know, if you find uh, more matches, maybe, that turn out to be from different branches of the tree. Um, then. What I've done is I've done a matching segment export on Genesis, on GEDmatch, and I've created a separate card for that as its own resource. And when you click on it, it shows you a preview, but you can open in a new tab, or you can make larger, and I think that's the same thing. And when you click here, you could, you could change. You open with Google Sheets. And that is a good app for, uh, collaborating with spreadsheets online. So here is the results of her matching segment output. I uh, need to truncate those email or remove them from the sheet. Um, but you get the idea. So this is, you know, what th these are the matches that I'm going to sort, that I'm going to upload to DNA Painter and things like that. Um, and uh, all right, you get the idea about that. Close. I'm still learning how to use this. So there we go. This is new software for me. I only started using it a couple weeks ago, but I do really enjoy it. I think it's going to be very helpful. Um, 
Okay, so uh, let's actually start the project. I'm going to go to DNA Painter and let's let's create the uh, checklist segments. So I created her uh, kit in Borland Genetics. So let's go. Ooh, wrong one. Let's go, and I've got it, I've got it queued up here, and I'm going to go back to the main menu, and I'm going to view segment view and export. Select. I only got one kit loaded in my resource list for now, and it is Eloise. So now it's rendering the visualization, and there we go. So now we just got to carry this over to DNA Painter. And how am I going to do that? I'm going to export it, and this time, since since classic GEDmatch is frozen, and we're going to be moving to Regular GEDmatch, I see no reason not to work in build 37 from now on, unless it's a project that I began in build 36. But this is a new, brand new project. Why not start off using build 37? Um, my tools will work a little faster that way, since the DNA kits themselves are using build 37. So, all right. Uh, I don't think it's a big factor, though. It's not like it's going to slow you down to use build 36 and appreciable amount. It's the size of the file is really what, what determines the speed of my tools. OK, continue. Uh, the exporting segments. Now I'll find them. In my data library. I'm going to guess it starts with something like Eloise. LOE's reconstructed segments, DNA painter compatible, build 37, created January 1st, 2019. I will say that's the file. All right, so now let's go back to DNA painter and let's import it. So we'll go settings and import data, new. I think this might be a subscription feature, I'm not sure. Um, anyway, I'm going to choose my file and now that we know where it is, my data library. Eloise, wasn't Eloise 29, it was, where is it? There we go, segs. And let's exclude segments under four centimorgans, because uh, I think I used five centimorgans as my threshold on JetMatch. Um, and that's okay because this is phased data. If it was unphased, I probably wouldn't want to go below seven. Um, let's say exclude larger matches over 1800. There aren't going to be any um, because I've already taken out all of her descendants, or at least I've started taking out her descendants from the spreadsheet. Uh, so it's just going to be her cousins. Uh, exclude smaller matches sharing under, let's just make that four. To proceed with import, browse the, uh, just in case, though, you know what? I'm just going to make this like 3,600. I said 3,600. Um, OK. And let's import the file and see what we get. Bam. OK. I'm going to change the name of here. I'm going to call it um, at the group. I'm going to call it Eloise um, Lindauer. Unresolved segments. And I'm going to use this as a checklist for my project. So uh, at the end of the project, all or most of these should be colored, should be changed to colors representing Eloise's ancestors. And that's my goal. Um, so now, you know, if I were to click on DNA print and profile here, uh, I click on the link, it's all there. And I'm ready to work on that. You know, then I open up my spreadsheet, you know, using the other one. Everything's here. It's easy to get started working on this project quickly now because uh, everything's in one place. And I'm ready to start exploring my matches and determining what criteria I could use to sort them and trying to resolve as many as possible uh, using what data is available on GEDmatch and Ancestry and anywhere else they may have uploaded. I could, uh, I could probably make a DNA resources card for other sites such as... Uh, uh, 23 and me, because I think uh, several of us have tested there. We can look and see if we find any new other matches there. Uh, I think they have segment data. Uh, and maybe some of the other uh, 
DNA, DNA sites as well, testing companies. So I think uh, you've got an idea how Trello works. Um, what my extracted segment tool then is going to do at the end of this project is it's going to extract those segments or the parts of the segments that I dis that I have assigned to each ancestor that will show up in the legend down here when I add uh, those segments. I'm just going to break down each of these segments like this one. And um, I'm going to go in to edit the, I'm not going to edit the match. When I figure out where I inherited all or part of this from, uh, or where Eloise inherited all or part of this segment from, then I'm going to go in and I'm going to change the ancestor group. I'm going to create a new group for a new ancestor for the first one, and then uh, split these up into uh, different ancestors. And then I'm going to use my Borland Genetics Extract Segments tool, and it's just going to create separate DNA files for each one. Uh, and that will be in a follow-up video uh, because I still have to do my homework and this may take a while to figure out um, how these different matches and how these segments uh, are related to where, she, where Eloise uh, Lindauer inherited them from, from which sides of her family. Okay, until next time and Happy New Year.